I find one of the most interesting teams in the entire NBA going forward to be a team that made it to the second round of the playoffs this year, and that is the Oklahoma City Thunder. They young, are the most interesting to you? One of the most, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, young, talented, a star to build around. Okay. Needing a piece or two here or there. How do they go about doing it? But they have about 8 million draft picks to play with. And how aggressive are they going to be this offseason? I just I find them fascinating, the way they have torn it all down and slowly rebuilt it back to this point. They made a move at the deadline, and it has caused a kerfuffle here at the end of the year. Gordon Hayward, who I actually, I think I must have been on leave when that trade happened because I didn't even know he was on the damn team. I mentioned it, and I basically said, (laughs) what a nothing burger. So they went out and got Gordon Hayward. He has been complaining basically since the year ended of saying, I should have played more, I could provide more, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I I didn't even know Gordon Hayward was still in the NBA. Exactly. Um, Sam Presti is their GM. He is regarded as a genius, you know, this... uh, Scared money don't make money. That's right. He's aggressive. He's going to go make things happen. And he had a press conference at the end of the year, their exit interviews. I thought this was awesome because you just don't always hear it from somebody in a position of authority. Here he is talking about the Gordon Hayward trade and owning up to something. Is that... I... I... I missed on that. Like, that's... That's on me. Like, um... But I'm learning. You know, I'm trying to learn... This team, I'm trying to learn the pace of the team a little bit. Um, and just trying to be a great observer of the team as it's going through these paces, knowing that it's really going to change on its own in and of itself. Like our team, the last 20 games was significantly different than the first 20 games. This is the same players. You know what I mean? But significantly different. It may, and every time someone changes or develops or we stumble onto something, um, it changes the rest of the team and how they can perform. And so it's, 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 uh, I think it's pretty nuanced, you know, and texturized, but, uh, I, I don't think I read that one perfect. And I'm learning from that in terms of bringing somebody mid season and especially early on in the process for our team. And look, I just, you know, uh, I'm sure some fans would roll their eyes at that. There, there's something about somebody in, in a position of authority or decision making who is honest about mistakes that they make that I genuinely appreciate. We all make mistakes in our job. No GMs get about a thousand on draft picks or trades or free agent signings or whatever the case. I did a half hour on Dolphins this today. So, I mean, <laughs> we certainly all don't make the greatest choice. Something about a GM just sitting up there and be like, yeah, dude, my bad. I screwed that one up. It was a bad deal. I shouldn't have done it. And I'm going to learn from it going forward. I thought that was really refreshing to hear from a GM. Well, I mean, it was something that randomly we had talked about as a show, I think before you had left, was are they going to make a move? And, yeah, should they make a move? And I think it in, was yeah. more around the should they go all in on a move, whereas like I was kind of saying no to that, but I understood because of the assets they have, they could do anything they wanted. Uh, it is nice. I, I think it's probably the nicest thing about our GM versus the previous one. He has certainly said things that have not aged well of the chips in the middle thing, Outside of that, though, he has taken full responsibility when these seasons have sucked. Hey, we don't have enough talent. Uh, It's my job. We got to keep acquiring talent. It it wasn't Chauncey this year. This was my fault. Like, Cronin has at least taken and done some of that. And that is something I don't mind if you make a mistake. Of course, everybody's going to. It is going to be impossible to not. It is um, an impossible math equation to figure out. Chemistry personality types, mental attitude. I I think it's the hardest thing about being where the Blazers are and why a lot of teams don't always dig themselves out quickly. It's why they get stuck there for a while. You can't account for the mental makeup of of a player you bring in. It's jokey and corny, but there's a new Gatorade commercial with Josh Allen and uh, Tatum, and Jordan's narrating it. And it's about, you know, just being mentally tough and how there's an it there's, there's just some – Josh Allen was a know-nothing high school recruit begging schools to give him a chance. Nobody would. Wyoming did. It wasn't like his Wyoming career was the most amazing. No. But look at him now, right? He's probably regarded as maybe the most consensus number two quarterback in the NFL, if not in the conversation of it. There's always an, an element of, of athlete that you can't quite put on paper. And so when you're adding talent, acquiring talent – what that means to your existing talent, how that person's going to fit into the mold of it all, it's an impossibility. And so you certainly do your best. I have no problem with people making mistakes. As long as you own up and you're accountable, then sure, 
Making a mistake is totally human. It's normal. It's going to yeah. happen. Somebody's saying it depends on what they gave up in the deal. So they gave up uh, three players, none of them, you know, household names. They gave up next to nothing. Cast, it, cast it was considerations. A, it was and, a low swinging yes, move. It and, was a, hey, can he be a fringe ninth guy for us off the bench that we probably won't rely heavily yeah. on because his career has not been what it once was. Uh, and you could have made a great case. They should have gone heavier into the big spot. I think they will. I think they will address that this summer. But to what he said, too, is our last 20 games, who we were versus who we ended up being totally different, yeah. is a different team. And so like, that was kind of my thing is I would have wanted to see what they were and then you make the moves because yeah. he is going to have to start moving some of these assets. These assets are just around the corner. <laughs> yes. You don't want to lose them all, but you've got a lot to use. They have. I just looked it up because I was curious. It's insane. So they have their, they have uh, Houston's first round pick this year. I mm -hmm. believe it was a pick swap option for them. So they have Houston's uh, or the 12th pick or something, whatever. They have a, one first round pick this year. They got a lottery pick. In the 2025 draft. Yeah. They have four first-round picks. Yes. They have their pick. Then they have the rights to swap with either Houston or the L.A. Clippers. They have Miami's first-round pick, protected one through 14. Mm -hmm. Philly's first-round pick, protected one through six. And Utah's pick, protected one through ten. So not all those might end up conveying. I don't know how good Utah is going to be. I don't know how good you know, who, Philly probably won't be there. We'll see with Miami. It's a lot of first-round picks to play with. So he's got some pieces to move. Uh, he seems to be going in the right direction. I just I find all of that. It's very unique to have a team who is clearly building in the right direction that also has this big of ammunition load to go out and address needs for their roster. You just don't see that very often in the NBA, and I can't wait to see what you, they do with you this know offseason. what's tough, and I know we're against it, but it's hard when you get to this spot as an organization. I've been thinking about this a lot with Indiana, Minnesota, teams that don't win the title. They fall short. Like, if I throw Indiana at you, they're probably going to sign Pascal Siakam. Yeah. I mean, you make that trade largely to resign him. But, like, what other move do you make? Yeah. Do you make some big all swing move, or do you say we got to a conference finals, we signed Siakam, we try to fill our fringe pieces out a little better? Yeah, Halliburton's only getting better, and we hope Neesmith and uh, uh, Nemhard also develop. And here we go. I, I think uh, uh, building winning teams that are young and still building themselves. I think it's really hard to identify because everybody wants the big trade machine trade, of course, and it's just not realistic.